This episode of United 96 is brought to you in part by Mundy Development. Whether you're beginning your first real estate purchase or you're a seasoned investor, Mundy Development can assist you with all aspects of the process. Kick off your next investment by visiting mundydev.com. You are now listening to United 96 Podcast on the RFK Refugees Podcast Network. And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to United 96 here on the RFK Refugees Podcast Network. Ted here, John here. Hopefully people can hear me okay as John opens a, a very fizzy drink that he's holding to the camera. Some, that's some, right. Coke. Some we ASMR now, going on here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, how you doing, my friend? I, your- I'm, DC United is season as effervescent as a cool, cold, crisp, delicious glass of Coke Zero. I'm not. I'm not I'm, I, do you want to unpack that at all? I'm not really sure what you. I'm, I'm just making an ad for Coke Zero. Okay. And, uh, but how am I? I'm doing good, Ted. I've got you know. Uh, I watched a lot of. I watched a lot of sports. There's not. There's not a lot that happened this weekend, except for I went to the Spirit Game, which we will talk about on Kindred Spirits later tonight. <laughs> uh, if you, if you're staying with us in the live show, but, uh, yeah, I think that was the highlight for me. I know you refereed a lot. Is that right? I did. I had, uh, f- was it five, six games? I had three adult level full 90 minute, um, per, per match games. Um, a lot of incredible champagne football of the eighth or ninth division, was eighth, eighth, eighth division of the central Virginia soccer association. Um, so it was, it was just, it was honestly, it was just like watching, uh, watching Liverpool and Man City. Let me tell you. Highly technical. I'm very <laughs> oh, yeah. sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of technical play there. Um, but yeah, that was my weekend. I also caught, caught soccer when I could. I, uh, had to watch the spirit game on replay, um, which we'll get to that again, as we said in the next show. So let's get into it. Let's talk, uh, let's talk DC. Um, Ooh, I, yeah, you know, we, we, we talked about. I think we talked about last week. I, I we talked about how yes, they lost three in a row. That became four in a row, or sorry, winless in four. I should say, not four in a losses. I'm a little out of sorts today. Apologies. Um, and I think we all we all said, look, you know, things aren't been great, but you know, we're we're we're, we're remaining positive. They're doing some things right. Big stretch of games coming up, um, and it kind of started with this game against New England. Um, obviously, the team's been injured. Uh, and they lost in kind of heartbreaking fashion. So before we get into the details, ha- have your thoughts or opinions changed at all from this game? I, I maybe came out maybe a little bit more down th- than I was maybe last week. Yeah, I don't know. I think I keep finding myself in this weird spot where I'm more optimistic than I should be. And that I'm not as mad as I should be. Because I think I just look at this roster and I look at the injuries and I look at the depletion of this of this roster and I just like, well... I mean, I don't know what I was expecting when we were down to the to the, like the the third or fourth center back down the list, the the, the third right back down the list, the second left back down the list, uh, uh, a, fret, a, a never before played winger, third depth left midfielder, all over the field. <laughs> we're we're way down the depth chart, so it's it's hard for me to be too upset about it. The effort is there, the individual mistakes continue, the defense looks creaky and leaky. But Benteke, as we'll talk about, I think probably a lot on this show, is finally as advertised. I can't have any complaint about the way he's playing. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, so he, he was the best player, I think, in today's game by far. Um, just in his ability, his movement, um, and really just as he's starting to put it all together. It's it's we talked about, I think, you know, we're seeing some good things from him. His hold up play was been elite. It's all, you know, it's really always been elite. You know, we've just been kind of missing that final piece, which is him scoring goals. And he now has two goals in two games. Um, so cer- certainly some good signs from there. Um, before we get to the goal, let- let's talk about, you know, you talk about the you talk about the team sort of, you know, being uh, makeshift. Um, so uh, we kind of went into this week, Pedro Santos down with an injury. And then we thought, OK, well, Mohamed's not on the list. He looked pretty rough after the after the New York game. And we're all kind of thinking, OK. Well, maybe uh, maybe he'll be fine, so we'll be okay. And then uh, he was a late scratch. I purely think that was intentional. I, I do not, I do not believe suddenly they were just like on game day, like, oh yeah, he's he's not, he's hurt, he's not going to play. I think that was always the case. I think they wanted to, uh, 
play oh, some er- Ernan it- misdirection. <laughs> Ernan and uh, and and Ben. Ben Ben was not uh, was non was very much on the same boat as far as that. I think I remember like Luciano Acosta was like questionable for like a month at one point and never played. Um, so the, so it's, it's the nature of MLS, um, it is probably frustrating if you try to play fantasy because you're trying to predict when teams will be, uh, have actual injuries until MLS actually like enforces, um, some type of penalty for, you know, lying about injuries or some sort of fine that this thing is going to continue to happen. Um, so we had Jacob green out left, uh, center back pairing was again, Steve Birnbaum, Derek Williams. Uh, and of course Ruan out right though, that changed pretty quickly to slot in Durkin. And I think what prompted that was a very, very rough 15 opening 15 minutes for DC. Um, They were exposed several times. It was sort of a carbon copy of, I think of what we saw from New York city was that Bruce arena probably told him, Hey, if Ruan's playing, wait till Ruan pushes up Win the ball. And if you win the ball back, just look for that slot right in between where the uh, wing back should be and your center backs. And you'll, you'll have a good time. And they opened up DC several times. Um, so much to the effect that it forced a complete change. Um, DC very fortunate to not go down one nothing. There was at least a couple opportunities. Carl, uh, I think uh, <clears throat> it was a Carlos Gill. It was uh, Gustavo Bo had a point blank opportunity. I think a point. I think I saw like a point seven expected goals type opportunity and an opportunity he should bury, and he put it over the top. Um, Bobby Wood had a couple point blank opportunities, all played directly to Tyler Miller. Um, yeah, a very, very rough opening 15. I think we all kind of thought uh, that this could be a long game. Were you in the same boat, John, or did you Did you have any yeah. hope after that first 15 minutes? No, I'm, I was very glad I didn't make any bets at that point because usually I bet with my heart. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a game that I believe I is the first game. Uh, if you guys are on the Discord, by the way, a plug to join our Discord with the link is in our Twitter feed. We always do game day chats. Uh, but in the official official DC United uh, Discord, I predicted the score on this one. I feel good about that. Finally, <laughs> I, I was previously being too optimistic, but this game, I was like, I, I don't feel good about this. So yeah, no, I, I, I the Ruan situation was was something. I was like, all right, well, I don't think they signed this guy to be a right wing player. Although, uh, he, you know, we'll talk we'll talk about it in a minute. Like his assist was pretty nice. There was there was that, and then he, I would say other than that, he was pretty invisible from my perspective. Yeah, it's it's. It's a strange one because they brought him in here to be a right back. I don't know what the, because this is the second game where they sort of placed him at right back and he pushes up, which is good, but he doesn't, he seems to not have a good sense of when it's okay to push up or when you need to actually sit back a little bit and maybe soak up some pressure. So I don't know what the coaching situation is going on with him. They made the adjustment. Um, A lot of people criticized it and I think, We'll get into we'll get into the the tying goal, um, but I do think that the move was a good bit of work from uh, Pete Shuttleworth, who took over for the uh, apparently very ill Wayne Rooney. So hopefully he gets better um, very very soon and comes back and is is healthy and ready to go. Uh, an apt move by Pete Shuttleworth to shift Durkin into right into right. He's a more defense minded player. I thought he kind of cut out um, cut out that sort of. Uh, win the ball in transition, find the right, find the in the revolution case, the left side of the field and exploit that left side. I thought he stayed back. He's the kind of guy who's going to sit back a little bit. Uh, he has played, I believe he's played some right back um, when he was at St. Truden in Belgium. Um, not a, He's not a wing back or that type of player, but he is certainly a player that will uh, that will sit back and play the defensive game. I thought it worked. I thought it actually got this team um, into a better shape where they were able to defend they were able to hold possession i don't i think like the i saw the xg was like 1.78 at one point and you never really saw that climb much higher for the revolution so i thought it was actually a good defensive play um i guess anything else before maybe we get into the goal that you wanted that you notice any other observations no i think that that was uh the the first half was uh they actually told the story you just you just sort of reference it i think we were all sort of saying that this was this is going to be a long night most likely uh, but maybe we, I think there was some hope that we could, you know, the fates would align for a zero zero draw, <laughs> I think, is the feeling I had going into halftime. Yeah. Um, but then we get then we get to the moment. DC starts to turn a little bit of the possession and uh, Ron gets the ball out, out, out wide. There's sort of a miscue on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and he plays a very, very nice 
Um, I, I think I figured out with Ruan, his problem is when he's on, he's he's very, I think, right footed, it seems like. I think he's tried to play a couple times with his left foot and it hasn't gone so well. I think when he was attacking down sort of that left side at one point. Um, but basically he plays a nice ball over the, with the, with his right foot skips over the line. Uh, Benteke makes an excellent run to kind of, uh, get in behind the, uh, revolution defense and he powers home the, the opening goal and DC's up one, nothing. And they head into halftime up one, nothing, um, probably undeserved. Um, but then you're thinking, okay, they're putting it together. We, we deserve it. We, that's right. <laughs> this, apparently, luck luck has nothing to do with it. Apparently, now we're actually going to make this happen. Uh, that was the that was the feeling. <clears throat> yeah. Um, obviously, uh, there was the massive massive thing that there was a certain player for the revolution that was on the bench. We had one of those two. We had Taxi Foon Dust on the bench. I think we both had uh, both had cards we could have played. Um, Carl, uh, Carlos Gill apparently coming off injury. Um. And uh, but let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about Benteke because and maybe we've, we've mentioned it a little bit. He obviously had a very, very good game. He gets the goal. Um, if there's one thing that's kind of keeping me going, it's sort of been his play uh, sort of in the past few games. We we talked a lot about, you know, he's, he's doing the right things. He's getting the moments. He, he got the opportunity. I think some fans are ready to ride him out on a on a on a um, on a spike and send him down the to the Anacostia. Um, at one point after that missed chance against Orlando. And I said, nope, I think he's finding his chances. He, he looks lively. He's getting those opportunities. He was not getting those last season. And I think he finally looks like a designated player for the first time. And that's very, very good. If this team is going to get any semblance of success, having him as a designated player, um, I think is going to be very, very good for this team. And, um, and yeah, not much else to say. Uh, anything else you want to add? Anything? Any other no. To add? <laughs> I mean, that, I think that's. I think that's pretty plain. I think the fact that he's getting the service he's getting from the depleted midfield ranks that he's getting it from, I think, is a good sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it tells you that any additions that are made in that part of the field. By the way, they're run. They're not really running out of time on that, but I'm curious, sort of, when they're going to continue to make. There's, there's a uh, yeah, lines in the water, slot. right? They have, there's lines in the water that they can continue to to fish on, but. Uh, I think that we and we'll talk about tax here in a second, but I think that right now he is the he is the one sure thing on this roster. Everything else there there's a there's sort of an equivocation about everything else, even good stories like uh, Ted Gutierrez. Ted Gutierrez won't have played this many minutes at this high level. He's starting every week. He's now going ninety minutes most weeks. Uh, I hope I think in a perfect world they'd be able to like allow him to to rest a little bit more, but the, that's not going to happen. They're just going to run him full, full bore into the wall because they're so, uh, they have so many problems in in midfield depth. Um, there's a, you know, there's other, there's a, there's other places in the field where you, uh, you could see some additions that need to be made, but I think anything that anything that happens in the midfield is only going to boost Binteke's ability to perform a little bit more. So it's a good, it's a good multiplier. That yeah. I didn't think you and I, I don't believe at the beginning of the season were, you know, we were generally optimistic for a good Benteke uh, season. We were hopeful for it. I don't think we we expected like honest to God, real DP play. And, and now we've got it at least, you know, this many games into the season anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think honestly, I mean, this has been if he keeps this up throughout the season, I mean, he is looking at. 10 to 15 goals. Uh, maybe he pulls in a couple assists. I think what also has been more impressive for me is he's starting to, he's starting not just, I mean, hold up play is one thing, but he always seemed to be, if he wasn't six feet in front of the, in front of the goal, he wasn't going to be effective. And now I'm starting to see him collect the ball and actually make some opening passes and find some other players. Um, I think I would not be shocked if it, I even looked at like his passing accuracy, but I wouldn't be shocked if it has skyrocketed over the past couple of games. And those are all very, those are extra elements that he can bring to his game that maybe we weren't expecting. Cause I think we all kind of came here. We said a good Benteke is a guy who's going to be in front of goal. He may might use his hold up play to lay off to a guy like taxi Funtas. Um, but we weren't maybe expecting any sort of like technical dribbling passing type ability. And we're starting to see that a little bit. And that's, that's all good things. To that's see. bonus. Yeah. That's yeah. still where I want him though. If I yeah. if you if you ask me where I want him, I want him in the six. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I want him facing towards the goal. That's generally what I would think. But absolutely. All right, let's get we, we talked some good. Let's get to the let's get to the not so good. So DC's kind of cruising. They have some opportunities. Um, I didn't want to talk. Obviously, Jackson Hopkins gets the start. He gets a good run. I think about sixty minutes. That's uh, Hopkins' first start this season and first start since October first against Montreal. 
Yeah, and and I feel like I feel like there needs to be a little sit down with him. Um, I are you I referring to all of his shots that he took? All uh, of his <laughs> shots that he took, which is fine. Hey, man, take your shots, take your opportunities. You know, I'd say maybe the one moment he definitely should have done better on. I think he got the ball wide open in the box. Uh, he still he reminds me a lot. I think he still has kind of the Griffin Yao. Where you see some good things from him, you see some of the technical ability, you see some of the ability, uh, the certain certain talent that he has uh, is just very much a, a much more of a raw and less refined player um, than I think we, we've seen from Ted Cudipietro thus far. Where he's still like he gets he was very antsy. I think if you if a more experienced player gets the ball in that much space and is able to maybe take a touch to get himself closer, maybe have a better opportunity. But he is thinking when he got the ball in that six, he's 18, it's like probably his heart skipped a couple beats. He took a shot. Wasn't a hard save um, uh, for per- Perovic. Perovic, is that the goalkeeper's name? Perisic? I can't remember the goalkeeper's name. New no goalkeeper. <laughs> uh, was it was a pretty um, was a pretty uh, easy easy save for him. And then he had a couple other opportunities where he just clearly tried to shoot. Uh, I was kind of looking at the body language from some of the players after the shot, but I think it was very much a... Let's not let's not dump on this kid. Uh, maybe build him up a little bit. So that that was good to see. At least there wasn't like a "What are you doing, ball? What are you doing, man? Stop that!" <laughs> yeah, maybe, I, maybe know, there was silent, but it wasn't overt. <laughs> as you were as you were saying that, I realizing the blind spot I have for him. I was already thinking. I think right next to this Rooney jersey, I want to get a game worn Jackson Hopkins, <laughs> and I want him to write Fredericksburg's own on it and then assign it. That's what I was thinking. So that. Anything I have to say about Jackson Hopkins should be sh- taken with a boulder of salt, and uh, that's <laughs> that's just the way it's going to be. I can't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some opportunities for this team. I think this team, I think the the notion that this team needs to do now, and what I'm going to be looking for for the following games, can this team get more than a one-goal lead? Because we'll talk in a minute defensively, this team still uh, still has some problems, even though, even though, I do not think the defense was the problem this this time around. And I'll maybe get into a little bit about what I'm saying about that. Considering the makeshift of the lineup, they weathered a a storm of 15 minutes, uh, but I think that was more due to the fact that the team in the midfield and sort of on the wing uh, was had Jacob Green. Um, Let's talk about Jacob Green. Um, I thought he he showed again sort of a part of that rough 15 minutes. You know, they were attacking sort of both flanks there before they shifted Chris Durkin. Um, and then I thought Jacob Green kind of settled down a little bit. It looked like he was going to become overrun, sort of in that sense. Did what do we what what did you make of Jacob Green's kind of second uh, first start, um, second real performance out there? I did. I did not. He did not stand out to me. I don't mm-hmm. think. I think as far as the back line went, I did, was not see the only ba- the only player on the back line that I really noticed for the for the, was Derek Williams because he had two blocks. We'll get to the deflection, but he had two block game saving blocks. Uh, ahead of that, he was his positioning was great and, and uh, was he was cleaning up a lot of messes that were that were sort of finding their way to the box. But I don't, I didn't really take a lot away from Jacob Green's performance. I don't so I don't know if that's a that's an I think it's a neutral. It's a good six and a half <laughs> if I was yeah. to give him a, a foot mop. What, yeah. what, what did, I mean, I would say he was a part of that problem in that first fifteen minutes. I think the Carlos uh, the um, Gustavo Bo opportunity came directly from his side of the field, um, whether he was pushed up or not marking closely enough. Um, I don't know if they just told him to shift back or there was you know maybe some shifts that were made in the midfield to kind of cover that. I couldn't really notice, uh, but I thought he settled down pretty well in this game. There wasn't anything I think he did too terribly wrong um, that I can really that I can really really point out. Um, but the team's up one nothing, uh, and then uh, Carlos Gill enters the field, and immediately thirty seconds gets the ball on a plate, plays a, a really nice long ball over to Gustavo Bo. Uh, Durkin gets turned uh, pretty badly on the play. Again, he's not a a wing back, but maybe you expect a little more from him on the defensive side. And uh, he fires the ball into the back of that one one. Um, disappointing, I guess you could say. It's like this team surrendering another lead at home. Um, and I'm trying to remember, like, I think DC then sort of got back on the front foot. Um, that's sort of when taxi, as soon as the goal went, I think that's when they were looking at just bringing in Emil Assad. And then they basically then, you know, motioned on taxi because I think they said he only had about 20 minutes and I'm pretty sure that goal came pretty close to 20 minutes. Um, so we got to see taxi come onto the field. Taxi makes his return. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a weird season kind of forgetting that 
oh, he's on this team. And yes, he is still a uh, very, very good uh, soccer player. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think before we get into that, I think we're going to take a uh, quick break. Uh, but we'll be right back uh, with more United 96 here in the RFQ Refugees Podcast Network. If you or your company would like to advertise on United 96, please email producer Brian at brian at rfkrefugees.com. I can promise you only the most electric live reads you've ever heard. And for a small nominal fee, I promise I won't make any references to Zoltan Stieber in the copy. Back to the show. And we're back. If you're wondering what that was for, um, check out the United 96 show. We actually have some uh, some on the podcast show. We might we actually have some. Uh, if you're watching on the live show, if you're listening on the podcast, you heard why we took that break. But um, it's it's a surprise for anyone who's watching us live to then go listen to the show again on the <laughs> podcast. There's a, there's a hidden Easter egg for you if you were watching live. <laughs> a hidden Easter egg. We're big. We're big time. Let's just say that we're officially big time. Um, Taxi enters the game. And uh, I think I had kind of forgotten uh, just really how good, regardless of his what happened last season, this guy is a good player and he makes us a better soccer team. Um, I'm really, really excited to see the pair up he will have with Christian Benteke because mm-hmm. I think he brings obviously a different style. It's everything like it just feels like it would work. You have a big giant hold up play and you have sort of a guy who can buzz around the field. I think as Lloyd Sam says, Hey, they need somebody to be able to buzz around the field. Um, and that guy is, is taxi food. one thing about taxi that I kind of, he has this innate ability. I don't know what it is. Um, like you watch some soccer players, they take a huge wind up when they want to like fire the shot hard. He has this unbelievable ability to almost take it like in a half step and Quick just, release. and just like release the ball with incredible amount of force. Uh, I think I think if if uh, if the New England Revolution goalkeeper is really good is not a goal, I think maybe he sneaks in that goal against I would say about half of this league's goalkeepers um, on that sort of down low shot uh, in, into the corner. I think that gets in from some from some from some lesser some of the lesser goalkeepers around the league. Um, I, that that the propensity to shoot at at the first glimpse is sort of what brought him to this club. That was Lucy Rushton's uh, first comment was that we're looking for players, his a- average shots per 90 minutes, his shot creation stats were off the charts and that's what drew him to us. So that, that will be good. I mean that, so it's like Jackson Hopkins, except for with a player that's going to score double digit goals uh, a season and that, and in, in his proclivities to shoot. So uh, to your point, very excited to have him back. He was on a minutes restriction, Mm-hmm. So we got what we got out of him, and I'm sure that they're going to continue to build. I'm glad that we got that. We didn't get a result, but I'm glad that he's getting. It's a chunk to the next to the next situation, and then you know on the road he'll probably play maybe 60 minutes. Maybe he'll start and come off, uh, and then the next home game we'll probably see him for for full 90 if everything goes according to plan. Uh, so that that that's a you know we were fighting this season with our one of our arms behind our backs. Uh, in the interim, we've uh, had two of our legs chopped off, <laughs> so now we have both arms back. But unfortunately, we're still missing uh, some some key pieces. Both both starting wing backs or both starting full backs, for instance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully, Jotzi is hopefully Jotzi is back next week. There's, I've not heard anything yeah. about the severity of his injury. Not yeah, today. I haven't se- I haven't seen. Anything. I guess the the injury report what comes out on Thursday, so I guess we'll we'll see something like that. Uh, but it's good to get him. I, I think this is a good stretch to get him. Um, the team will have. Uh, a road match against Chicago coming up. Um, so hopefully he gets maybe a little bit more of a run out in this game. I don't know if they may, he may be ready to start. Who knows? Um, I think it's going to depend on, I guess, how he looks in training. Um, but I think maybe if they give him another sort of second half appearance, if he can kind of come in, I think they definitely want to be careful with him. I don't, I don't think they want him reaggravating anything. Um, so I think being cautious with him is a, is a good thing. The last thing you want is getting him back in and then having them pick up another injury and be out for several. Wayne might pack it up and leave if he, if, if he lose tax <laughs> again at this point. Um, but, uh, but one other player, one other player, and this is, and this was a, a stat. That was dropped uh, by Foot Mob, and, and I want to go ahead and credit. Uh, said W H for M M Weems. I don't know on the GCU Discord, but he dropped the thing about uh, about Matthias Click, um, and Matthias Click is number four in MLS in chance created according to Foot Mob. So I mean, take that with a grain of salt. But I mean, you have some nameless. You have Christian Espinoza for San Jose, Tiago Mata, uh, Hani Mukhtar. Uh, he's ahead of Luciano Acosta and chance created. So I think there's some people I, I don't think 
I think Matias Click is coming forward just as advertised in that he is not necessarily the type of guy. He's not going to make a pass. He's not going to have like the Luciano Acosta. Maybe you'll have one of those, the Luciano Acosta, like full field switch that turns into a, um, that turns into a, a goal. But I think he's going to create chances. He's going to make smart passes and sort of effective plays. I don't, I can't pick out any sort of any particular type of moment that happened, but I think he was uh, still pretty effective in this game. Um, can't, can't, can't give you a specific moment, but I think he still had some moments of sort of recycling that play. And I think getting taxi back, picturing him with a guy who's going to shoot. I think that number is only, he's been doing this without obviously one of the best forwards that the team has, as far as getting shots created off of, off of opportunities. Here's the question for you as uh, taxi regains the starting place. Most likely where does Ted Cudi Pietro go? Does he go to the left midfielder role or does he go onto the bench? I think I think he's I think he continues to start. I mean, who else? I mean, you have you you're going to I think he goes more into that sort of left mid. He's sort of been playing that type of um, that type of wing position in my mind. Uh, maybe he goes to the bench, but I, I don't. I, I just my question is who else do you who else do you put out there if not Ted? Who, who's your like front three that you start? Nigel with? Roberta is the one that was is mooted anyway, right from the beginning of the year. I would not do that, but I'm just yeah. curious. I'm curious where they, you know, because we talked about sort of that midfield. I'm curious whether Lewis O'Brien might occupy that role a bit, um, whether he maybe goes in a little more of an advanced role. He seems like he seems he seems like a very similar player to Matias Click, kind of based on what I've seen, sort of that eight ten hybrid. Um, but I'm very curious to see where he kind of slots in once he gets his paperwork. I haven't heard any update about his visa. Um, hopefully, hopefully soon, because um, the team needs needs depth yep. wherever they can get it. It will be very interesting to see, like a uh, two I sort of generally identical players as far as output. Uh, do you see? Do you see two? Num- do you see that like a two man pivot? And does that does that get rid of Canals and they have two wing players? Or uh, it's going to be there is certainly they're going to play him. I think yeah. is I think that that that's, that should be known. So and they're going to play Click, and they're going to play Taxi if he's available, and they're going to play Ben Tech if he's available. Everybody else. A midfield perspective has got to be fighting it out in training. And also really it's going to be about what makes sense from a tactical perspective on that particular game. So, you know, I think you mentioned it before about MLS fantasy, uh, <laughs> any other players other than the ones I just named, you're going to really want to pay attention on a week to week basis uh, if they're starting or not. Yeah. Cause it won't be every week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens once they. I think that first game when he has his visa situated is going to be an interesting interesting lineup choice, which is honestly a good problem to have. Um, I mean, I, I'll say it now. I think this team. I'm curious to see. I think in this game, the biggest problem was not necessarily when we talk about defensive. We we talk about the center backs. We talk about the goalkeeping. By the way, Tyler Miller unleashing his inner <laughs> Jorge Campos. I think I called him like the American Jorge Campos coming out of his box. Uh, and a play that I, that I feel like I feel like would it would have, I was so scared was going to result in either a PK, a denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity and automatic sending off. Or I thought he was going to handle it. Yeah. Handle that's it outside what, the box. I thought when I saw the replay initial or before I saw the replay, that's what I thought happened. I was like, Oh God, what a, what a, what a doom cough. And uh, as they showed the, as they showed, I was like, "Oh wow, never mind. That was extremely <laughs> ballsy. Where'd he go? Where'd it go? That's exactly what I thought it was going to happen." As long as it works, man, no one's, no one's, right. no one's going to complain. Um, obviously, we we get to the, we talk about this team. I think this game in particular, I don't think the problem. It was an unfortunate goal. I think the problem with this game was just, and I think it's been a problem all year. Is just not not capitalizing on enough opportunities and really not extending the lead because I think that can, if I think if this team gets to, I think if this team gets a second goal, you know, and maybe in that flurry of possession they had before Carlos Gill comes on, um, I think they actually walk out of here with three points. And I, and I say that because I think the psychological impact of getting a second goal of extending your lead is so crucial um, in this league in particular, when you have every single defense is, is leaky. Um, look at Atlanta, who seemed like they were flying high and then just got waxed six to one. Um, 
defenses as a whole are, are leaky. So actually for this game, despite the second goals, I, I mean, the second goal is a, and let's talk about that. I mean, it's just off a set piece. Every single DCU defender is going for the ball. If uh, Noah is it Noah Buck, I think is who, who got the goal. Um, yep. If Noah Buck, uh, if he, um, if he lottery, takes that shot, that. if he takes that shot, same thing. Nine, 99 times out of a hundred that deflects off and goes nowhere. Um, and DC maybe walks out of here with a point, maybe more if they can, if, if, if they can, uh, if they can get the opportunities. Um, but I, I don't like necessarily look at that opportunity and say, Oh, that's terrible defense. It's, no. it's freak. It's freak. It's soccer. It's what happens. Did you, that sorry, you there? cut out. Oh, sorry. I was saying it's freak. It's soccer. It's, it's what, it's basically what happens. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, like, I mean, where do we fall in this team defensively? It's another game with two goals. These aren't the same, I guess, as some of the other goals they've given up. It doesn't, but I, I think, I think it's hard. I think it doesn't matter at the end of the day. I looked, uh, you know, there was a chart that was showing defensive expected goals and attacking of expected goals. And DC United was not at the bottom of the pile on the defensive side. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Like they've given up 10 goals to this. They, they're, they are sec. They're the most in the Eastern conference. The second most conceded is Atlanta. And that is nine. And they just gave up six of them in one game. Uh, so there, there is a, they're consistently bad defensively. They're consistently giving up either through individual mistakes or through unlucky bounces or whatever it is. They're just, con- they're conspiring to concede. And I don't know what that offensively they've been dangerous in spurts in every game. I think that every at every single game they've had at least a thirty minute period where they were hard to handle aff- attacking from an attacking perspective, but they I, they got to button it up. This is where you bring in a Ben Olsen. Like, all right, mm-hmm. guys, I understand what we're doing up front is very important, but we cannot concede two goals a game. Yeah, can't do it. We will we will fail. We will we will have one point per game. That will be our end of the end of the year. And they're coming up next against Chicago Fire, who have scored three goals in the last two games. Uh, home and away, so they can score no matter where they're at. Be so we we got to figure something out. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, they go to a five man back line. I don't know what they do. They've got to figure something out that at least in the near term stems the tide so they can compete. Yeah, but I think I mean I got to think what you said. I'd be curious to see what Andy Nahar's status is. Um, he's still been out. I think a little bit longer than I expected. Um, Which is the would... Andy Nahar story? I think is the. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So, be curious to see once, uh, once, once he gets back. I think, I think, I hope personally. I think they're just being extra cautious with Andy. Uh, I think any injury that would be for a normal player would be maybe one to two weeks. They're like, let's take that extra week to to make sure things are fine um, with him. But I mean, I, I think you kind of brought it up. I think it's been it's been a lack of cohesion amongst the back line. I think maybe has been contributing to this, um, and I think. This game was unfortunate, but I think your your report still stands. It's it's ten goals. It's the worst in the league. They've got to find a way to button it up, and uh, I think they will have an opportunity to hopefully do that. Uh, despite the fact Chicago got a dramatic win against uh, Miami, Miami also dealing with some absences and everything like that. I don't take a lot of stock in this game. I think this is a game if you want to have a bounce back. Yes, it's on the road. Chicago are not a good soccer team. No, they are. They are. They are a very bad soccer team right now. They've got some lucky bounces. I think in that in that game, Kai Kamara, of course, coming off the bench, scoring a goal, I think, for his 20th MLS side, somewhere in that range. Um, dude, just this, dude, just dude, just trying to score for every team. I think until this, he, he retire once he scores, once he scores for every single MLS team. This is the Michael Jackson Derby, the who's bad contest. <laughs> you got to decide where they're both going to play. Someone's got to win unless they both draw. And then it's a. It's still it's still undetermined, uh, but that if you're going to be a team that wants to make the playoffs, we look at the stretch that's coming up. You got to get if not here, then where? If not now, yeah. then when? Uh, so that's and, we got to go ahead. And you got to start. I mean, you got to start with beating teams that are. I, I would I would argue the one the one positive thing is we have not lost to a team where you're like that is a bad team. That is a team you should beat. And how's here's and that, our first chance? <laughs> It hasn't happened. New England's a good team. Columbus is a good team. Orlando's a good team. Toronto, we're, we're their only loss. So we even like picked up a point against some team that maybe we shouldn't have. Um, you know, th- these are all really good teams that we're losing to right oh, now. No. What? 
I was just thinking that gives me a very strong 2021 vibes, like uh, an unexpected win that isn't warranted at the beginning of the season, followed by a, a sustained run of horribleness. And then, hey, then things go great for like right. a run and we move up to third and then uh, the team. But, hey, we don't have the we don't have uh, Losada running things, running, running the whole team into the ground. That's so maybe, maybe maybe things maybe things will be better. And we but have I, to I, we, we have our former coach standings. We've got to update the, the big whiteboard behind <laughs> us at all time. Uh, Benny team Benny Ball uh, is, is in the lead in first place. Uh, mm-hmm. D.C. United is in second place and Hernan Losada's uh, super fit runners are in last place in yeah. the in the former coach Darby. And then that's another game coming up too. I mean, we talk about the stretch. You've got um, you've got Columb- you've got Chicago on the road. Let me ask you this: do, do, Is this a must-win game, Chicago? No, no game in March is a must-win game, or April, I guess it would be, because things can turn around. But to us, it is. To fans, it is. If you heard uh, Fred Briant speak, mm-hmm. uh, his sort of his post-game comments about you know how good of a team we actually are and how we're in all these games and we should expect better. That only goes so far. Once you start losing to these perennially bottom teams, I think the players are smart enough to realize, like, actually, I guess we're not because you you are as good as you are as good as your results at the end of the day over time. Right. From from week to week, you can be like, ah, the better team lost, blah, 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 over and over again. Uh, But at a certain point, not necessarily, not not necessarily. So, yes, I think for for fans, it's a must win game for their long term prognosis. You know, no, I, I think I think it's a must win. I think this is a game where you, yes, yes, you can turn it around, but you need right now. I feel like the team, the team had that massive building block off the first game, the dramatic win opportunity to push forward. That is so far in the rearview mirror at this point. Um, And I think it really ended at the end of that new England game. And I think this is a, I think you have to look at this as an opportunity to win, to get some momentum back, not just win too, but like win convincingly is, is really what I, what I want to see. If this team squeaks out a two, one or, or, or a one, nothing win, I think it'll still feel good. I'm sure I'll still sing their praises, but if they can go out and say, you know, we are not as bad as you think we are. And we're going to stomp the Chicago team to prove it. And that's really where you have to start is you have to start beating the teams that are worse than you or being the teams that, that are bad. And if you if you if you pile up enough of those results and then you get some momentum to then maybe start to challenging some of the more mid table or top teams. And that's that's the opportunity in front of them right now with uh, on the road against Chicago. Then I think they're home against Columbus and then they're back on the road against Montreal. So two bad teams sort of in the in the middle there. So two opportunities to, to get some results. We've got some questions from the chat here from the live. Sure. I want to make sure we get to the, get to those. Uh or comment some of these. RJ RNDC says Burnbaum has got to go. He needs to be replaced by a center back who can move quicker and take charge of the defense. That would be fine. There's not one on the roster. So uh, unless they get one here in the next month and a half, uh, maybe it's Brendan Hines. Like who knows? <laughs> maybe he, he, I think, he, uh, I think if you had to look at performance so far and sort of play type, I think Williams and Hines, Ike might be the preferred center back pairing. Wayne, you know, Wayne's preference or not, I think that I think that that might be when everyone's healthy, that might be the way to go. Brennan Heinz, of course, is uh, injury prone would be a way and there mm-hmm. and catastrophically injury prone, not like small muscle injuries, but like weird breaks and hip fractures and foot fractures and all these things. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I heard from a person who will remain nameless in the press box last week uh, that that said basically that exact same thing. Also did not really? think very highly of Heinz, like, <laughs> but Interesting. But, yep. Uh, I mean, you're talking you're talking about a dude that's still the captain of the team. So to, to bench him mm-hmm. would be, it would be interesting to see. I, I don't know. I I, I want to see this team. If this team goes out and puts up two three goals on a team, and they have a two three goal lead, and then they completely fall apart and lose it, then I might be more on that sense. But. Maybe I'm a little more. I don't think Birnbaum was the problem in that New England game. I think he was. I can't. Nope. Rec- there weren't any moments you could pick out in that game. So I'm hopeful maybe this pairing of Williams and and, and Birnbaum as they kind of learn more about each other might be something that they can sort of stabilize. We'll see. That's all we got for right now. Yep. On the back of that, RGR also asking at some point does Pines get a shot in the least cup, <laughs> <laughs> open cup, open cup. Probably uh, open cup. If I'm being before honest, that, that's no. Wow. I mean, 
What do you do? I mean, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, or he also would like to know if we would. We, I think looking at the Ruan situation and Dirk can have them play right back as a result of it. Uh, would you rather buy? Would you rather if you had to bring in one player? Would you rather bring in a right winger or a right back? Hmm. Um. If it's being... actually it's a, it's a surprisingly complicated question, right? Yeah. Because I think the other contexts are Andy Nahar, when healthy, would be a right back, hopefully, mm-hmm. uh, and that that would allow Durkin to go back to right midfield, where he's been pretty good. But Dirk, but Nahar is never healthy. So, <laughs> so what, what what would you do? What, what of those two would you do? I mean, he almost want to say right back because of uh, Nahar's injury situation. I mean, he's good, but he's also when he goes down injured, it's two, three weeks. You know, I think he's on his third week, I think, at this point yep. where he's been out. So, um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I think I would probably do the same thing based on that yeah. the same premise. I think there's more guys that could fill on it right midfield than clearly there are right back. There are not so many that can. I mean, the, big, the biggest thing is that this team is playing very narrow sort of with that front three um, because Teku De Pietro is not a winger. Um, Taxi Fundos is obviously not a winger. They're very much relying on to give them width. They're relying on those wing backs to give them width. Um, and that's what you're seeing here with, with the idea of what they're trying to do. So. Great news for Andy Nahar's hamstrings when he comes back. Yeah. <laughs> um, Spaghettification from our Discord says, how does this team lower their league worst tied with Portland conceded goals? Okay, so we uh, imagining constant players. I, I, I threw out a five-man back line. What do, you, what do you think this team needs to do to become more stingy? What is, is it tactic? Is it mentality? Is it formation? What do you, what it's, do you think you're for me? For me, it's reduce, reducing the amount of amount of chances and opportunities that the other team gets. And I think that that's for me right now, that's the only path forward. My hope is that with the addition of, of a guy like taxi who can sort of maybe provide that little bit of a press, um, maybe a little bit more than Benteke can, he can provide the movement um, he can, and also having the midfield. Um, I'm, I'm very curious to see when Victor Paulson gets back because I think we saw, I think we saw in that New York City game with him in sort of that defensive midfield role, he is a little bit more of an imposing, as good as Canals has been, a little bit more of sort of an imposing threat as far as just knocking guys down, willing to get physical, willing to 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 knock some guys over. And I think if you can keep the pressure keep sustained pressure off that back line. I think you reduce the number of chances that, that the other teams generate. And you also then reduce the number of opportunities where this defense has to be. Um, cause, cause while, I mean, I agree. I think I would love to see the team go out and find a, a center back that will solve all these problems and that will be that guy, but he's not coming. So the only option is get better at offense, get better in the midfield to reduce those number of chances and, and allow, allow for fewer opportunities where they're going to have, you know, those 0.7, 0.8 XG expected goals chance. Um, because I think that's, that's, that's a part of it too, along with Birnbaum. And I don't want that to be, yes, Birnbaum, it comes at the end sometimes when he's caught off, but that also comes from a breakdown in the midfield or a breakdown uh, from the allowing the team to get into those spots that then the defense has to be the last line. And they're the ones that get the, like at the 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 brunt end of the blame. Uh, Jeff Witt, Wim says, "Has Green done enough to be penciled in as a starting outside back?" No, I would say no. But no, nope. no. I mean, with all compliments, healthy, certainly not. Um, no, but I, I think I think he's moved up. I think he's moved up from a fringe player to a depth piece to a first guy off the bench. He's a Chris Odiatsum versus a uh, guy uh, 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 Samake. A guy yeah. who is, by the way, who made team of the week down in USL. So good for him. He, he appears to have found his his, his niche. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I think, I, and, and that's a huge step for him. Uh, that's a big step, um, I think, from getting him. And that's really been, I think, the success, the success story of this early stretch, as poor as it's been, is that we've seen players now. Let me, let me say this. Regardless of how this season goes, with the young players who have gotten minutes, who have shown that they can rise up to the level, when it when most likely Wayne Rooney goes away this season, um, I think any other coach is going to have plenty to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, with with a Benteke that hopefully continues the run he's on, um, a Taxi who I think will still have one more year left on his contract. 
Mateus Click, who's looked good. Yes, they'll be a year older, but I think any coach, if it's a Carl Robinson or somebody else, will have plenty to sort of work with and also build upon um, once the the ten ton weight that is the Raval Morrison contract situation, which is still a thing. Um, He's playing April twenty fourth. Tick tick on that one for sure. <laughs> DC Ulysses, who is, I would say, our resident grump, uh, but also I think maybe making a good point here, again on the Discord, says, true or false, if DC doesn't in the next ga- five games win, not a draw and not a hopeful but and better than the result loss against Chicago, Montreal, and Charlotte, DC is not a good team. True. 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 No argument. I, I will say out of those, out of those three games, five points minimum, because I'm going to assume you're going to go and win the home game against Charlotte. You pick up two draws against Chicago and Montreal. A little disappointing, but um, and then seven or more would be what you what you what you want to maybe aspire to. Pick up a win in one of those games, win your game against Charlotte, and then you pick up a draw against um against against I against the other one. So on the road, so I see four points from that. You see four points, really. I see uh, I see three points against Montreal and I see a draw against Charlotte and I see a loss on the road against Chicago. Really? Mm. Yeah. We'll I see do. Was right. I think, yeah, we will see. Uh, I see five, and- I see five points. I don't think Charlotte's that good. Um, I think they've, they've picked up. They, they've maybe stabilized a little bit, but I think they're still not a good team. Listeners remind us in uh, <laughs> in, in three weeks to to see who is right. They'll see. Who's uh, right. Yeah. Let's see. And then I think we got one more question here. This is a good question. Kind of weird. We don't really don't answer the weird questions. Uh, but I thought about this a little bit. So I, I maybe have a head start on you on this. I'll g- think now. Yeah, uh, F- but me, I, F- I thought about it a little bit too. And I'm, I'm trying to think whether I'm. <laughs> F me gently with a chainsaw. My Our favorite name says, if DC United were competing in a CONCACAF Nations League or international tournament, what country is it most like in terms of style and or skill? I will go first because I thought about it. I would say they are like Poland. We have Christian Ben. We have our Christian Benteke, who is our Robert Lewandowski, who is the guy that the only guy who's going to be able to likely score a goal uh, against whoever the competition is. And then there's a bunch of young players who re- who are replacing former legends, uh, and then a bunch of just guys that are playing that are that are that are not necessarily at the right level, uh, and and then also an experienced goalkeeper that's that is no longer. Uh, would would not start for most teams in the league. That's uh, Wojciech Chesney, who now I believe plays for Juventus, but at one point was a starter for Arsenal. Uh, that's who I've that's who I've drawn against. Hard, it's a hard question. It is a hard it's question, kind of like yeah, because 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 kind of what is DC United's play style at the moment or skill level? I mean, level. I mean, I, I'm not going to talk about comparing levels of like where we sit. Honestly, we I do sort of get a little bit of the what the current state of the Mexican national team is right now. Um, a team that is trying to rely on old legends. They're, they're still very reliant on Memo Ochoa in goal. Not not a one-to-one match on, you know, the goalkeeper. Tyler Miller is obviously a lot younger than Memo. Not not performing sort of a one-to-one match, but just sort of this, this conflict. Um, it's a lot like what the U.S. men's national team went through in 2018 is that how much are you relying on your old guard, your guys who got you there. And then how do you open up for maybe some younger players to maybe take those roles? Um, You know, we talk about there's some young talent that's exciting and that's fun to watch, but they're also maybe not getting the opportunities. Um, And maybe we're seeing that start to creep through a bit in this team. So that's my answer. Uh, Poland's probably the better answer, but I was thinking, I was thinking about more CONCACAF as I was, as I was getting through this. So fair enough. uh, that's all our questions for the week. Thank you for sending those in every week on our Discord or on Twitter or email, wherever you do. We appreciate yes. it. Join our Discord. We do a, do a it's right there. Go to the twitter.com slash RFU Refugees. Join our Discord. If you're if you're against uh Elon's taking over of Twitter and what's been happening, uh join our Discord if you want to talk to DC fans. We also do a chat every game. So we'll we'll continue that. Um we'll still do it. I'll be there April first. I'll be coming back from the kicker's home opener wearing the new new kit. You can't see it on the podcast, but you can see it on the live It's very nice. It's very nice. Um, home opener for them. Uh, also, patreon.com slash Rocky Refugees. And uh, if you want to donate to the show, we, we've gotten some new donations lately, and it's been great to see. Um, also, again, I will promise I will be getting back to doing some streaming. Um, maybe trying to work out something new for that. Might come up with some more fun things for that. But I'm uh, going to try to get it. Try again this Thursday week. It's been, it's been a little tough on me this week. So going to get back into it. So have some fun there. Maybe we'll talk some DC. Talk some other things. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so, so much for listening, and we will catch you next week. Vamos. Vamos.
Thanks again to our show sponsor, Monday Development, available to help you with all of your real estate needs. To get started on your next real estate investment, visit mondaydev.com. That's M-U-N-D-Y-D-E-V.com.